All right, well, there the beast sits in all its glory. So as you can see, it's gonna be pretty easy to pull that head off because of the fact that we have so much already disassembled, so. All right, I got these injector lines loosened. So I collect plastic caps of all kinds of sizes and whatever, specifically because when you need to put some sort of a protective cover on like a tip of an injector like this, you find one in your stash that will at least keep the dirt out. So that's the real big call. That's the main reason of doing it. That one doesn't quite fit. All right, I think these caps are gonna work. Let's give them a shot. There we go. Just plug up these holes so that no dirt. Oh, come on now. I'm just gonna plug up these holes so no dirt and junk gets in there while we're working on it and manhandling right. it. There we go, we got the injector pump plugged and all the injectors. So that'll keep all the dirt out. So sprayed uh, penetrant on all the nuts and bolts to take off. Other than the head bolts and the exhaust manifold bolts, I've taken everything else apart, so it shouldn't be seized up too bad, but you just never know. It looks really good inside that valve cover. So I am not overly worried about what it's gonna look like when we get to actually uh, pulling the head. So we need to remove the decompression, basically valve, valve or linkage. And I think that we remove this bolt and it should slide out. So right here there's a bolt that goes on the decompression valve and I believe the rod should slip out of it. This is part of the decompression valve that this little rocker, um, basically it has a little cam that pushes down on this ball spring essentially relieving the compression so that it makes it easier to start. All right, this rod should come out now. All right, let's get the rest of this decompression lever out. Oh, come on, baby. There we go. So this is the little piece that rides on that shaft and it comes in contact with that ball and that spring way down in there. So that's what engages and disengages the compression with that lever. So you gotta get this off and then slide the whole rod out. And I had to put a nut back on at least two of the rockers to get it 
cinched down flat enough so that the there wasn't tension on that bar so should have taken it off before but whatever we'll move on all right let's get these rockers off oh i'm gonna get that oil line okay put that back down there so oil line fitting here probably gonna disconnect the one right there on the head and take the oil line with the rocker All right, got the oil line disconnected Alrighty. rocker should just come straight up come on, baby. All right. why can't I get it off what are you doing Go in your hole. You go in your hole. Yeah. Oh, I sure hope I don't have to do anything like get the loader frame lifted up. I mean, there is like almost enough room to get it off. It's the middle one that's hitting right here. And... I mean, shoot, I am not opposed to just notching that to be able to get that off. I don't know. I'm going to look at it from another angle and then see if there's another way. Probably could just remove the head with it on. I'm just trying to avoid that because I still have to snake this head up and out of here like that. It could probably go in, but I think it'd be easier to come out this way. Well, that one's loose. That's good. Well, that one's loose. Sweet. Two more. See if these two are loose. loose. Sweet. That is four exhaust manifold nuts all loosened. Which means the exhaust manifold is going to come off nicely. Beautiful. Alright, here's the exhaust manifold. Alright, I'm taking this water neck off. I have a tub below just in case we get any water out. All right, here's an issue I'm having. So this is the rocker arm assembly and essentially when you go to pick it up, it contacts right here and I can't get it off. Right there, where is that contacting? So it's contacting. Maybe if I take that I might be able to get it if I take this nut right here off. Dang loader arms on these 955s. Uh, 
I'm wondering if I just cut that washer or bend that washer. All right, I bent this little washer right here just down slightly. I think it should be enough to get this out of here. Let's find out. three of the four <laughs> all right as you can see it's hanging up right there and then this is hitting the top it's a good thing I'm getting this head off because I'm gonna clean all this <laughs> paint that's falling into the top out but for now I guess that's just what we got to deal with I resorted to taking out this stud here we shouldn't change anything these push rods to go in exactly the same place they came out of so I number them and put them in order just like this see this push rod has to come up through this hole Bolts undone or head nuts. I might have to get the big boy out. Yep. Here's the setup. Got the crane up over the center. I put a 
put a chain fall on the hook so that I can control it without the truck being on. And the plan is I've got a lifting eye on that side, a lifting eye on that side in the far back corner, and the strap we're gonna hook onto this and hopefully gently kind of lift it out and swing it over and lift it up. So that is the plan. Let's find out what happens. There it dangles. There's the head. We got it off. Let's take a look at the cylinders and the head gasket and we'll see where we're at from there. All right, so there are our cylinders and they don't look bad at all. All of these rubber bushings here, these little uh, pieces, those are all gonna get replaced. The head gasket is also gonna be replaced. Obviously, that's the whole goal here. And then we've got a few other things and to get this head gasket off. Oh, there it goes. Let's grab these. That one's off. Well, there's our head gasket. really does not look all that bad but we weren't replacing it because we thought it was bad we we're replacing it because it was leaking and we were this far in and doing a head gasket was not that much more work so all these little rubber bushing ferrules are all coming out we'll clean up that head and get it ready to throw the new head gasket on clean up the or we'll clean up the block, I mean, and get ready to put the head, new head gasket back on, all these new ferrules will go in, and then we'll clean up the head really well. And some of the ferrules are pressed into the block still, we'll pull those out. But I'm not seeing any ridiculous issues. Sweet.
All right, I wiped it down and I've actually cleaned up around this cylinder here. And I mean, the head looks amazing. Um, this injector cup and that injector cup don't look the greatest, but I'm not overly concerned about it. They still have the same size round hole in it. It's just, you know, kind of gotten beaten up over the years. That one and that one look really great. On this valve and this valve, I can still see the numbers. And yeah, everything looks awesome. So the plan is to finish cleaning up the head on the bottom here, get it all ready. And then we'll flip it over, clean up the top, clean up the sides, blow it all out, and then get ready to put the new head gasket on and all of the new uh, all the new parts are right here. So I've got head gasket, valve cover base gasket. Um, I've already got a new valve cover gasket in the valve cover. All of the ferrules and rubber bushings and O-rings are all here. I've got new exhaust, or no, intake gaskets, and then I've got new exhaust gaskets too. So yeah, we should be ready to rock and roll once we get to that point. But first, it's gonna be a bunch of cleaning. Yummy. So that's the base gasket for this valve cover assembly thing. So we got a new one of those. There we go. All right, I know there's a specific tool for removing these valves. I don't have it, so we welded a piece of a uh, square bar onto a, a bolt. We're gonna thread it down into this hole here. And then I'm gonna use one of these ball or tie rod separators, ball joint separators. Go. The keepers out. Three keepers. Once you get those out, both sets are a, it's a set of springs, one inner and one outer, and then the top cap. And that's that one. Now I'll just twist this a little bit and we'll do this.
got them all. All right, now that we got the springs and keepers off, the valves will just push straight down. So these bigger ones are our intake valves, and these are our exhaust valves. What we're going to do is we're going to look at them, look at the the actual seat on the valve, or actually look at the, the grind on the valve, and then look at the seat. And I can already tell somebody's been in this at one time, because these two look very new. All the rest of these look older. This one has definitely, it's almost recessed in there, and I'm not sure if it's supposed to be proud slightly, which I think it is. So that one's probably been ground. Um, and of all of them, that one's the most recessed. But whatever. This machine ran really, really well. Only reason I'm even going to do some quick uh, valve lapping here is because of the fact that we're right here. It's off. It takes no time to do it. So we're going to take each valve out, get all the carbon buildup off of the valve here, put some valve grinding compound on there, and then we'll lap them and then put it all back together. There, that's much cleaner. All right, of all of these, the seats look pretty dang good on most of the intake. The exhaust is where there's a little bit of issue, especially with this one here. This one is not absolutely great. That one looks pretty good, and this one looks pretty good. So we're gonna actually start with this one. I wanna see how it turns out. So we're gonna lap the valves a little bit. Start with some valve grinding compound. I went ahead and, and lapped all the valves. If there are gonna be two that I worry about, it's this exhaust valve and this exhaust valve. The it's just not making a lot of contact all the way. I really needed to get a one of my valve grinders and grind the seat better and take this onto the valve grinding machine and, and grind that better. I'm not gonna do that. It ran beautifully before. The whole goal here was just to do a little bit of maintenance on it. Get these valves so they seat well. Get it all cleaned up, put away, and ready to rock and roll. So we've done that. The valves are lapped. They're making better contact than they did before. And I'm not too worried about it. So we're gonna put the springs back on and get this head all finished clean it up. All right, this is the valve cover, basically the top ring, and we've got a brand new gasket for it.
Huh. Well, all the holes line up, except for this one. Is this upside down, maybe? Let's see. Okay, maybe that was upside down, because they all line up now. All right, last valve spring. There we go. All reinstalled. Valves lapped, head cleaned. Gonna make a gasket for here on the side. We should be pretty good. We are gonna put a straight edge on the bottom of the head itself and on the block just to see if we're square. I don't think there's gonna be any problems with this, this head at all so i am not gonna mess with the injectors they're working and i don't want anything to go wrong with them i can always i can always pull them out from the top if i need to so for now those are fine All right, I'm just going for clean surfaces here. Completely clean, no oil, no grease. And now we're gonna put the head gasket on and get the ferrules in. All right, so here's our new head gasket. And then we've got, what did I do with them? There we go. And then we've got brand new ferrules. So what these do, so these holes here are oil and water passages. And so the way it works is there's a rubber seal and then the brass bushing that goes in each of these to seal off that water passage from the block to the head. And then I'm pretty sure that there's one right down here that is oil and most of them are the bigger size there is this smaller size here too but i'm gonna get those popped in get the head gasket on and should be pretty close to putting the head back on all right so these are the old ones basically it's a rubber little uh like o-ring almost that goes over these metal ferrules and they're cheap enough to just replace i don't know if those are usable still or not but so there's a groove on the inside of that and you take this and it pops down over that groove. There we go. So just like that. A little dirt in there. I think I'm going to run a put a wire brush in there real quick. But I'll get the rest of these made up just like this one and we'll get it put in. All right, head gasket. There we go. Get those ferrules in now.
Got all eight of the large barrels, and one, two, three of the little barrels, and all of them are water, except for that one right there is oil. So, yeah, looking great. Now let's get the head on, put this baby back together. All right, we're gonna make a quick gasket for this real quick. So I got a piece of uh, gasket paper, actually a scrap off something else that is the perfect size. Boom. And just like that, we have a new gasket. No waiting. Just ready to rock and roll. So I'll clean up the edges a little bit. We'll get these pieces out. And then we'll put it on. Yeah. So I like using this uh, Permatex Aviation Forma gasket. And mainly, it just seals up really well. But on this situation, we're gonna mainly use it just to glue the gasket onto the machine so we don't have to hold it while we're setting the head on. If I don't do this now, the only way to put this gasket on is to do it by removing the water pump, which I don't really want to do.
we're good. I think we got it on all the bolts. All right, so the new ferrules, the new ferrules need a seat a little bit, so just using a lead hammer. So the manual shows that the half inch nuts are 70 foot pounds and the 5 8 inch nuts are 140 foot pounds with hardened washers and hardened nuts. And then it says earlier has a lower torque rating. I don't know which one I have, but I know I do have washers. I don't know if they're hardened. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go with the 70 and the 140. Should be fine. I'm gonna start with 70 on the big ones and I'm gonna start with 35 on the small ones and then step up to the bigger amount. And then to make it nice and easy, I wrote the numbers of each nut on the actual head itself so that I can just torque it down in the order and not have to think about it because this one was a little bit weird so basically you move from the center out but some of the some of them you go like eight nine ten eleven and then go way over there so you're like doing four in one spot and then four in another rather than just two in one spot and two over there so I want to do it the way it should be done so just to make it easier, I wrote it right there. All right, now we're at 140. All right, I got the push rods in. Time for the rockers. All right, to get this off without having to cut a notch up here on the frame, I took these uh, studs out. So we're gonna put those back in. And I've got two of the nuts on two of them so I can line it up and then so that I can basically get it tightened because it was basically I'm using these two nuts as a jam nut to hold on to that shaft while I thread the stud into the head there. So I've got this one just threaded in by hand. So what I'm gonna do here, put one nut on and then a second one on. Basically, we'll jam these together real tight. And now I can run that stud down in. torque spec for these uh, rocker arm assemblies, but I got one more to do, and then we'll get uh, this all set up. All right, got the decompression rod. And it goes in right here. Thank you. 
here, there's a little spring and ball that go down into this hole right there. And then this little rocker here goes on to that shaft that we just stuck in there. And it's keyed in there with a woodruff key. So we're gonna get this onto the shaft, get that rocker on there. There we go, brand new gasket. Ugh. I'm gonna take this stud out. Thought I could do it without, but the dang loader arm is in the way for everything. We got the head completely installed so it's finally time to get the completely rebuilt starting clutch and the governor back installed and so the only reason we took the governor off was to get the starting clutch out and so obviously that has to go in first and then we'll put the governor on so the starting clutch goes right in there and then we got some linkages to connect and then we'll take the governor and it'll go right there It's in. I gotta get two more bolts on the bottom and then we'll head over to the 
to the governor. So this is just marine grease, and I put it to make it easy to remove these gaskets later. The other thing that it does on all of these old machines, it takes up any of the imperfections in the castings or in the covers, whatever, you know, these machines are, I mean, this is a 1956 tractor, so any little bit helps seal better. And then when you go to take it apart, there's a good chance you won't ruin the gasket uh, because the grease will let it release. So, it doesn't take too much longer and I make a lot of my own gaskets, so I just spend the extra minute or two to just throw some grease and I put it on both sides. It also helps the gasket stick and stay in place when you're assembling everything so that it doesn't move. Just a, a thin coat, doesn't take much. All right, so last night, finished getting the governor in, starting clutch is in, valve cover's back on, exhaust manifold's back on, the head is completely in, the water pipe's back on, I had to take off this cover for the injection pump housing because I had to get a couple of bolts there and you couldn't get it with the cover on, so I made a new gasket for that. Now, we're gonna install the intake manifold. And so we'll just pop these plugs out. And I got brand new gaskets for it. These are the bolts that came out of it. And some of them were technically too small. I think these two and this one so I need to find three more bolts that are in this size range. Let's just double check. Yep, so I'm gonna go dig through uh, my stash and see what I can find. All right, so a bunch of bolts in these. And then down here, I've got a bunch of bolts and more. Oh, and more. And more. Won't be in that one. Probably going to be in this, this drawer. Let's see here. Here's what we're after. Too small. Uh, 
That one could work. That one might work. All right, well, I'm gonna dig around here, see what we've got that'll work, and then I'll bring you back when we're putting it back on. All right, little anti-seize on each of the bolts. found four of the proper size bolt, proper length, little copper NICs, perfect. So let me get the rest of these snug down and then we'll move on. All right, for right now, we're going to add a little flapper on this pony motor exhaust pipe. Beautiful. That'll keep the rain out. And the exhaust. All right, well, I think that's where we're gonna call it on this one. I can't start the diesel all by itself because the diesel shares coolant passages with the pony motor right down underneath this, uh, this plate and this towel I have here. And so I would either have to make a blocker plate to block that off so that coolant didn't fly everywhere, or I need to get the pony motor back in here. And so because we do have a direct start, direct electric start that we added, we could start it, but I really need to get the pony motor put back together, and that's going to be next. So then we've got the starting clutch in, governor on, the intake manifold and the exhaust manifold back on, the head is back on, new head gasket, all new gaskets on the valve train or valve cover. I need to get, I'm really thinking I need a new valve cover because it's not seating real well, and I need to get one of these caps. So... What they do is this o-ring basically gets pushed down and seals so that if water gets on here it doesn't go down into the valve cover or into the valve train and so right now this one if water got in here it would go right down in so i need to replace that and there's a lot that has to happen on this machine before i can push dirt with it namely mainly this whole track so I have the roller frame ready. The biggest headache and hiccup is I need two new track chains. The track chain on this side was completely gone. The one on the other side is usable, but it's pretty worn out. And it's literally showing where it would be quite a bit of work to make that one work. The upper roller on this side is completely shot. The front idler has some issues. This tensioning mechanism is the same as the other side. So the real big hiccups to making this thing push dirt are, I need track chains. I need to figure out a way to tension the tracks, whether I retrofit some sort of screw similar to this, or what I'm leaning toward is fabricating a hydraulic tensioning mechanism with a couple of hydraulic cylinders 
welding a plate on the end of one and then putting a grease circ on the other so I can extend it out like you would see on any track machine that's modern. I need to get an upper roller here, an upper roller for the other side. The Obviously, this track chain has to be completely taken off. All those track pads are in great shape, so I need to take those off, put them on the new track chain. Then the other big thing is having the sprocket pressed on. So I have not even put the bell housing back on for that uh, final drive. It's in the shop, and so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take that whole thing and have the sprocket pressed on at a buddy's shop and use his uh, big press, press the sprocket on, and then I can mount the whole thing as a unit. Once that's on, it'll be a matter of getting the roller frame back on, the rollers in, get the roller, uh, then I'll get the track chains installed. Once those are installed, it'll literally be able to be used. Now, I question a lot of the hydraulic hoses on this machine. Almost every single one of them is old and brittle. I've already blown a couple of them. So, you know, what I, I guess what I plan to do is once I get the machine operational and, and able to run it, I'm just going to use it. And if we blow lines, we blow lines. I, it's going to be expensive to do all these lines. These are not cheap lines. They're, they're big. They're a very specific style. Um, so... I don't know if you have any ideas on what to do there I, I just don't want to spend the amount I paid for this machine and just hydraulic hoses but I guess if I have to I have to but for now the plan is to finish up the I mean the engine is good it ran great before only reason we went so far as to take the head gasket off was because we were that far in all the components that I've touched have all been rebuilt cleaned fixed repaired Next up, we'll put the pony motor back together. That's been sitting on my bench for over a year. I have everything to do it. I just need to do it. We'll get that installed. And in that video, we'll start everything back up, make sure it all works well. And then we'll start putting our attention towards the undercarriage. The undercarriage is really the main hiccup. I mean, the engine, the pony motor are basically not the problem. They were never the problem. I'll be straight with you. I totally lost some wind with this project. It, it snowballed into way bigger project than I thought it was going to be, um, as many of these things do. But I know everybody's excited to see it back together and back working again. The other big thing that I want to do is where we got Old Red, there was a whole nother loader arm and bucket. And if you look at this thing, these pins are wallowed out. This isn't even the right pin. Somebody's torched something there. This bucket, I mean, there's cracks. You can see holes there. Somebody has tried to fix this. I mean, cracks here, here. You see daylight right through there, daylight right through there. We got an ecosystem growing here. I mean, this, this loader arm and this bucket has been used and abused. But the other one on the other loader arm is much, much better. Uh, it doesn't have any teeth. Not that these ones are any good. They're some something welded on. I don't even know quite what they are. But anyway, the other one, I think it's a smooth bucket. Not that we couldn't add teeth. But the loader arm itself is also in much better condition. The pins are nicer. I don't know how free it is, but obviously that's just a matter of heating and beating and getting some penetrant in there and just moving it. But that would be awesome. I may have to rebuild the hydraulic cylinders. Um, I don't think that one has yeah, got a little bit of a leak. That one looks okay. On the other side, I know for sure. I know for sure this lower one is leaking because I see it drip. And that's what's causing this oil puddle down below the machine. And then I think that one's a little bit wet too. Downside to this cylinder, you see the, the scoring. So there's been some rough wear on that thing. Luckily, I do have right over there on that cart another set of cylinders for this. I have not really overly inspected them or checked them out how good they are. So if we were to break it down on what's left, we got to put the pony motor together, start the engines, both pony motor and the diesel 
I need to replace the track chains on both sides and get all the rollers situated. I need to either replace or upgrade the track tensioning setups. I need to put the sprocket on this side here, get that final drive all put back together, get the roller frame back on, reassemble that. And at that point, it should be able to be moved and used. And so that's what I'm really driving towards here. Um, I wanna I want to push dirt with this machine. I mean, <laughs> I've had it for so long now and have done almost nothing but work on it. And so the big goal here is to get it back together so I can start pushing some dirt. And then at that point we can deal with failures and what breaks like hydraulic hoses or leaky cylinders or whatever. But yeah, at least we got some progress done and we are one step closer toward getting this bad boy back on the road more like back in the woods so thank you as always for sticking around here at salvage workshop i truly appreciate your your continued support and you know thanks for sticking around everybody that's been begging me for content on old red i will definitely be getting back on the pony motor very soon because i want to get that on and then i'll start putting my attention towards the undercarriage on this machine as always thanks for following along i truly appreciate your support you guys all have a great one. Take it easy. So I gotta make a special way to light this monster bonfire. I love doing different things. And this time, we're gonna use Old Red's old diesel soaked fuel filters. And the way we're gonna do it, is we're gonna start by cutting a chunk of it. Crappy old arrows. See where we're going with this? In the middle of the fuel filter, there's a metal core. And so I just kind of smashed it flat. It's holding, but I'm not going to rely on that. There. Now it can't slide off the tip. There we go. That'll be good enough for now. Well, that'll be good enough forever. Because at the end of the day, it only has to stay on there. Until we get a big boom. Alright, since I cut them... They're kind of wanting to unwind a little bit, so I've got some other string here, and I'm just going to tie it on here and then wrap a few around just to keep it from completely unwinding. That'll do. Straight up Viking style, baby. Heck yeah. I'm sure all old Vikings used their fuel filters off their 1950s cat track loaders because obviously we all know that the vikings definitely were around in the 1950s so not a new idea plenty of vikings have been doing it for generations when they made their flaming arrows all right now it's time to go play viking salvage workshop style yeah. Ready? So there's the arrow that we made out of Old Red's old fuel filter. Hell yes. <laughs> Alright, my turn. 
<laughs> went out. Uh, yeah, it's a big marshmallow. <laughs>